Hello, I want to share with you the Kinefin framework, which is the framework you're going to use for the next movie report and really try and identify uh, all the different elements of communication and the uh, conflicts that are going on. So we've already had some readings about Kinefin, but I wanted to explain it myself to you. It is a more advanced theory. So I am available if you would like to discuss it with the movie that you're considering doing it for, if you would like to. All right. And uh, every movie report, remember you're choosing a different movie. I'm going to share my screen to start here. All right. I think this has, you can see it now. I'm up in the corner. Hi. Uh, okay. So the Kinefin framework is a framework that was developed to try and understand risk and leadership and the way that problems get solved and the difference between collaborations that are successful and functional and when problems arise and when things go wrong. So to compartmentalize the framework, you'll notice one side is the ordered side and one side is the unordered side. So we're gonna start in the lower quadrant of obvious on the ordered side. That's where you start. Uh, obvious is where things are going smoothly. You have good flow. If you have to have a meeting or a problem solving kind of communication event, meeting, whatever it is, it would be obvious if you're in, ob it would be clear that you're in the obvious section of the Kinefin framework if you pretty much know exactly what needs to happen. Because you, and the reason why is because you've seen it a bunch of times, hundreds of times, thousands of times. You're clear about what is the cause and what is the effect. A problem shows up, you're like, aha. I've seen this problem hundreds of times. I know what the cause, the effect, I know the solution, and we keep going with the flow. And it's pretty, uh, it's pretty, it's obvious. It, we know what needs to be done. And the slogan for obvious is just do it. Let's get it done. Let's get it over with. Let's check it off our list. Just do it. And then we'll be done. If there is some solution thing that's happening in the obvious section, uh, it's gonna be more like, I know what needs to be done and I need this resource. We need to do this and this and this, and then we'll have, we'll be back in the game. We'll have flow again. So that's kind of what we would expect there. Uh, so, Oh, and the other thing about obvious is that it's sometimes called best practice. So the best practices go here. Next, we're gonna move up, still on the ordered side, complicated, which is a setting in relationship status that can be, things can be complicated. So a complicated, if we're labeling something as complicated, a problem or something's going on, what we're going to do is we're going to say the cause and effect is no longer as clear. I haven't really seen this before like this. Uh, what we, but what we need is experts. We need an expert opinion. We need to bring in a, a resource that can help us solve this problem. And the, when we bring experts in, experts usually uh, they've seen the problem so many times, they're living more in the obvious. Uh, although this is what's really important about complicated is that even if we bring experts in to analyze a problem, we're gonna say that they still need to go through um, an analysis with the people who are experiencing the problem. They need to do interviews, they need to get opinions and do a bunch of research and observations to make sure that their recommendations will fit the actual unique problem that's happening at that workplace. 
uh, what is recommended in Kinefin that in complicated, uh, the experts not only need to be reaching out, listening, watching, they also need to include in the final decision people in the meeting that we would call either diverse or naive. Diverse meaning that we need people with different perspectives. So even if let's say the problem is happening with one group in the company, if we wanted to diversify the conversation, we should bring in one or two people from other parts of the company that have nothing to do with that problem because that diversifies our more, comp our more complicated understanding of the problem. Kind of like um, the system theory. Remember when we talked about system theory and the ecosystem, that if a problem is existing here in this part of the network, we're going to say that, or this part of the organization, we're going to say that people in other parts of the organization are affected by it, and we should get their input as we try and figure out how to solve the problem. So when we're in complicated, we definitely need diverse perspectives from the organization. And then it's also said we should bring in someone naive. Naive meaning that they're not so engrossed into the um, problem that they are losing track of the explicitness of what needs to be understood. So if you bring someone in who has no idea what's going on, then when people start talking, you get someone going, can you explain that part? Can you explain that part? I don't know what you mean by that. And then things that sometimes get skipped over because everyone's in the same kind of cultural implicit bias, you get that naive voice who now can point out where things might need attention. And the reason why we need a diverse person and a naive person in this kind of complicated approach to problem solving is because we want to avoid group think. Uh, you may have already had this experience if you've ever been new on a job. If you've ever been new on a job and you come in and people are just kind of talking in acronyms and jargon and they're skipping process because they don't even remember the process. They're so in the culture of it. So you come in and sometimes you're assigned someone who's really good at doing that, but you're still like, what about this? What about this? Right? That's really important. That's good for the company to know that. And that's good uh, for when problems come up, we need to be able to have that perspective and avoid group think. All right, so let's move over to the unordered side of the Kinefin framework. The Kinefin framework here is where things get a, more complex. So there's a difference between complicated, where we might have uh, an idea of what the problem is, but we need analysis. In complex, this is where the cause and effect, we can't know it really, and not until time has passed. And then in hindsight, we could probably tell what caused what. It's kind of like um, the pandemic. We're in the pandemic right now. So it's really hard to see cause and effect. But 20 years from now, 30 years from now, 50 years from now, we're going to have a much better, clearer idea of the order of events and what was cause and effect. Uh, that's why when we talk about the 1918 pandemic, we talk about it with a little bit more knowledge. Um, but when they were in it, they couldn't see it. So that's complexity. So complexity, if your problem is landing here, it's because there is Things aren't predictable. No matter what you do, there's kind of a randomness to what's happening, and we don't have a clear answer. And so you want to gather a group of people, no more than 12. It's very important. So seven to 12 people who represent different worldviews and different perspectives. So we might need 
because it's a little bit different than when in complicated when you bring in the experts. Here, we're going to say nobody is an expert. We just need seven to 12 people who have completely different skill sets so we can move into a collaborative place. And then what happens in that group is that people will start coming up with ideas. And ideas are possibilities that are probable. So I have an idea of what's happening. Um, we're, when we're in this kind of trying to understand all the ideas, we want the ideas to make sense to the issue. We don't want things that are beyond the causal realm. We want things that are probable or possible. And then as soon as ideas by the group, we get ideas, we label them probable or possible, and then the group performs the hypothesis. Uh, so in complex, you know you're in complex if you have to keep testing things to see what happens. So I'm going to propose we do this. All right, let's try it out and see what happens. See if it works. We don't know. It's too complex. And then failure. Usually complex teams will hit failure over and over and over and over again. So one of the things we want to see is how do people handle failure? Is failure like, oh, it didn't work. Womp, womp, womp. I give up. No, we want people in here with resilience and strength and creativity to keep going at it, even when they are confronted with more failure than success. Um, you want to kind of think of complex like a little loop. We get an idea, we test the hypothesis, we get failure, we need a new idea, we need a new hypothesis, we test it, right? It's going around and around, round. I would say that if you, if the experience is the, if the problem is so complex, that you're in this, the no clear answer part of this means that you're going to be here for a while. You might be here for months or years, and that should be okay if we are invested in really truly solving the problem. It's an uncomfortable place to be. A lot of people do not feel comfortable in complex situations. They want to pull everything back down into obvious. I want best practices. I want to know this and this. And those people who are really uncomfortable with uncertainty should not be living here in complex. They need to give up the reins uh, to the people who have more um risk, ability to take risks and, and experience failure and build resiliency and grow so they can try another idea. And that means in leadership in organizations uh, that are usually pretty risk adverse are constantly going to try and pull things back over into obvious, or we just need an expert to tell us to what to do. I don't have time for this, which is why really complex issues like homelessness has really a hard time finding viable solutions because there's so much pressure from public uh, and the representatives and different types of organizations that say we need this solved, that we aren't willing always to sit in the complex place of failure uh, as we test different ideas. So that's just an example to think about. Chaotic in, so let's move down into chaos. Chaos, it's a theory. So here we are, when things are in chaos, cause and effect are completely severed and there's total randomness. We have no idea what is going on. There's almost a feeling of like being in an earthquake and there's this instability and you kind of almost freeze in the, in the witnessing chaos. And because of that, 
we think of chaos as it's a moment in time, there's an event and we have chaos. Now with this chaos, what needs to happen is leadership in the organizations need to decide are we going to, how we're going to deal with this problem? Are we going to move to complicated? Is that where we go? Or are we going to move to complex? Which one? And different organizations will choose different things depending on the situation. In uh, just a real life example in 9-11, that was a moment of chaos. And we brought in our first responders and we we kicked into all these emergency things, military and different groups to kick into emergency. But there, there was kind of this suspended place where people really didn't know what to do. So once it was over, a couple things happened. There was, we were definitely in a complex situation. So we created a committee to do a federal committee uh, with an outside expert, but with all these other groups. So that's why it was in complex. And they went through and did a full analysis of what happened. That's more complicated. But then to solve the, they take that and they move it to complex where another group tries to figure out we needed to work on our communication with first responders. We needed to uh, uh, think about homeland, homeland security starts showing up. Things like red alert, yellow alert. Do we need these alert, terrorist alert things? So we're testing all those hypotheses. I would say we're still in a vibration of complexity on that moment of chaos, but um, hopefully we never have to test that to, uh, fully. Um, but that's kind of a way to think about what's happening here. In the middle, we have a little bucket. There's a little bucket in the middle of Kinefin theory and the bucket represents problems in your organization, things that are going on that people are not really sure where it goes. It doesn't really fit anywhere. And that always brings me back to that idea that I say many times in my classes, I teach theory, theory is a box. Life doesn't fit in a box, theory fits in a box. Now, a really good theory like this one is so strong that it can apply because we understand patterns to many different situations, but not every situation is going to work. So when something is not really fitting in, we throw it in the bucket in the middle till we can determine where it belongs in the framework. That's my explanation of Kinefin theory. And I'll make another video just like I did before where this is more of the theory video of the next assignment and give some instructions about that. Thanks everybody. Have, talk to you soon.